let's introduce the idea of a discrete time dynamical system. This is very similar to a Markov chain. You're in R sub n, and you've got some addition, some initial vector v sub zero, and then you define v sub n plus one as some matrix A times v sub n. And this initial state and this recursive definition gives you a list of vectors. And I used the frame dis the phrase discrete time. The image here is that time is passing as that, and that as time passes, we're going from state to state to state. In the um, case where A is a stochastic matrix and V sub zero is a probability distribution, this is a Markov chain. But A doesn't have to be stochastic and V sub zero doesn't have to be a probability distribution. If this matrix A has real eigenvalues, we can use eigenvalues and eigenvectors to see what happens as n goes to infinity. Let's state that as our goal to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n times v sub zero. And let's illustrate this via example. Let's say this is a and this is v sub zero. So this is not a stochastic matrix. This is not a probability distribution. So it's a discrete dynamical system without being a Markov chain. Um, I mentioned eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is a triangular matrix. So its eigenvalues can be read right off. And then the eigenvectors I found off screen. Now, linearly um, different eigenvalues give linearly independent eigenvectors. R2 is two-dimensional. If we have two linearly independent vectors in a two-dimensional space, that's a basis. So any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of these eigenvectors, including V sub zero. A quick bit of Gauss-Jordan elimination, and we've written V sub zero in terms of these eigenvectors. Let's now find V1. V1 is by definition A times V sub zero matrix multi vector multiplication. 
distributes over addition. And now W1 is an eigenvector. A times W1 is the eigenvalue times W1. A times W2 is this eigenvalue times W2. So here is a V sub one. Not simplified, of course. We could do this scalar multiplication and then do this addition. But instead, let's repeat this argument with V sub two. Once again, multiplication distributes over addition. Once again, we have matrices times eigenvectors. In general, V sub n is going to be seven sixths times this eigenvalue to the n times this eigenvector plus two times this eigenvalue to the n times this eigenvector. And now we're taking a limit as n goes to infinity. As n goes to infinity, one half to the power of n is going to zero. So this limit that we were looking to find this is a bit odd notationally but it's the limit as n goes to infinity of this and we're almost out of space but we're also almost done for every value of n, two to the n is a scalar, seven sixths is a scalar. For every value of n, this is a scalar times w1. So what's happening is we've got this vector W one and as N is going to infinity, V sub N is getting closer and closer to just being a scalar times this vector. So we've managed to analyze this dynamical system using eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Our next goal is to ask what happens if this matrix A has complex eigenvalues, but for that, we're going to have to do some serious groundwork.